Hi friends, today I am going to explain how to find the electric field due to an uniformly charged thin spherical shell. So in the last class we discussed about the Gauss's law and uh, the electric field due to uh, infinitely long wire and infinitely long thin sheet. So if you are not yet watched that video, I will give the link in the description, just go and watch it out. So today I am going to explain this part. So we have a shell of radius capital R. Here my charge is distributed on the surface of the shell. So my charges are not inside the shell, my charges are distributed on the surface of the shell. So my target is to find the electric field at point P, some random point I may measure here, 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 anywhere. So I just want to find electric field at point P. The problem here is I am not able to use the electric field formula I already mentioned here my charge is uniformly distributed on the surface of the sphere so the distance from this charge to this p is not equal to distance from here to here it is not distance from here to here my distance is the variable because of the distance is the variable what I am going to do I am going to consider the total flux produced by the this charge density then I am going to find my electric field from this so I am going to consider an imaginary Gaussian surface here this of radius r ok. So I am considering my imaginary Gaussian surface with radius r. So the electric field is always is going outwards right. The electric field from the positive charge is always going outwards is E in this direction and then my normal also the same direction for the surface. It is nothing but if you are sitting in the center of the football, all the surface which is perpendicular to you, which is means which is parallel to the electric field. So now I just want to write the expression for the uh, electric flux to the Gaussian surface. So this surface is called the Gaussian surface. Gaussian surface. My flux to the Gaussian surface am I right phi of E equals to E into A cos 0 degree because my normal is parallel to the electric field because my electric field is always going outwards. So, E into A. So, the area of the Gaussian surface, the radius R. So, this is my surface area of the sphere 4 pi into R square. This is my equation 1. So, I am writing expression. This is the expression for the flux through the Gaussian surface. Next, I am going to write the flux, the expression from the Gauss's law. So, from Gauss's law, I may write phi of E equals to Q by epsilon naught. But my Q, I mean, I can write my Q from the surface charge density. The surface charge density is sigma. So I can simply write the sigma equals to Q by A. So if I substitute this sigma here, my Q equals to sigma into A. If I substitute this value here, I may write my phi of E equals to sigma a by epsilon naught. So what is my area? Area of this smallest pi with radius capital R sigma by epsilon naught 4 pi r square. So this surface charge density is distributed through this surface area. So this is my equation 2. So now I am going to equate my equation 1 and 2 here. So if I equate my equation 1 equals to 2 because this is flux from the Gaussian surface. This is flux from the Gauss's law. So I can simply write my E into 4 pi r square equals to sigma by epsilon naught 4 pi r square. So 4 pi 4 pi gets cancelled. Therefore my electric field equal to sigma by epsilon naught r square by square. So, this is the final expression for electric field at point 
P. So this may be any random point, right? So electric field point P. So if I replace my sigma equals to Q by 4 pi r square. This is I am going to consider this is my equation 4 and this is my equation 3. So if I write my sigma equals to Q by 4 pi r square, if I substitute my equation 4 and 3, so I may write this equation as E equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. So this r square and r square gets cancelled 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by r square. So this is the electric field at point P. So if I want to write this as a vector, I am going to use a, a unit vector here. So this is the final expression for the electric field at point P. So this is nothing but the electric field due to an, a point charge. So this is very much similar to the point charge. <coughs> the next case. Sir, what is happening? My electric field outside the sphere, it is inversely proportional to 1 by r square. So, from here I can simply write my E is inversely proportional to r square. Okay. So, when you are moving away from the sphere, my electric field decreases. Sir, what is happening inside the spherical shell? The next case is, the next case is what is happening inside the spherical shell? We are going to consider a Gaussian surface inside the spherical cell then find the electric field inside. So, the second case is I am going to consider uh, this is for inside. So, I am going to consider some random point is going to be P. I just want to find electric field at this point. So, I am going to consider uh, ima an, an imaginary Gaussian surface here with radius r. So, this is my imaginary Gaussian surface with radius small r. So, first I am going to write the flux through the Gaussian surface. So, the flux through the Gaussian surface I can simply write phi of E equals to E into A or E into 4 pi r square this is my flux through the Gaussian surface. In this case this smaller sphere is called your Gaussian surface. So, next case is from Gauss law. So, from Gauss law my flux here equal to 0. Why? Because inside the Gaussian surface there is no charge. So, I already told you when there is no charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface, the total flux is going to be 0. So, when there is no charge, here there is no charge. So, the charge is available only outside the Gaussian surface. So, inside the smaller sphere, there is no charge here. So, my flux is 0. If I equate these two, I can simply write my electric field is going to be 0. So, which means the electric field inside the Gaussian surface is 0. This is very very important uh, result. So, this is effect is called your electrostatic shielding effect. So, when there is no charge, when there is a charge on the surface of the conductor, okay, uh, next I will explain. I'm going to, next, I am going to plot a graph between these two. Uh, Okay, so if I equate these two, my electric field is going to be zero. So the electric field inside the Gaussian uh, inside the uh, spherical shell is zero since there is no charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. If there is no charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface, the total flux is going to be zero. The total flux zero, my electric field also zero. If I am now, I am going to plot a graph between electric field versus the position vector E versus R. So, if I am measuring electric field here, 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 0, here, 0. So, up to this point my electric field is 0. So, inside the shell there is no electric field. 
so up to this point my electric field when my r equal to capital r my electric field is zero so my electric field is maximum on the surface of the sphere so my electric field is maximum at this point and then it's going to be decreases here if my electric field outside the spherical shell is inversely proportional to r square the electric field inside the shell is going to be zero so this is called your conducting shell okay so this is inside the a conductor or uh, inducting a conducting shell my electric field is going to be zero so this effect is called a electrostatic shielding effect okay electrostatic shielding effect this is very very important result when you are considering a conducting material a non conducting material so this is called your conducting material when you are considering a non conducting material so if i have my non conducting material i give you some example here for non conducting material so we have a conductor we have a non conducting material here my charge is distributed everywhere in the conducting material my charge is only on the surface of the conductor here my charge is distributed everywhere if you are considering a smaller gaussian surface even if the smaller gaussian surface we have a finite charge we have a finite charge we have some finite electric flux we have some finite electric flux there should be some non zero electric field inside the conductor so if we, for the non conducting material if you plot a graph between r versus electric field if i plot if if i take the reading from the center to some random point so my electric field is gradually increases it maximum when my r equal to capital r and then again it's going to be decreases so outside the shell it's inversely proportional to r square but inside the shell my electric field is directly proportional to r right so this is just a comparison between your non conducting material and the conducting material for the uh, uniformly charged thin spherical shell this is the graph my electric field inside the shell is zero here for non conducting material my electric field inside the shell is gradually increases with increase of r and inversely proportional to the r square inversely pro inversely proportional to the r square when you are measuring the reading outside the shell so this is the comparison between your conducting and non conducting material so i just stop at this point <coughs> if you like this video share with your friends and subscribe our channel to get the more content so we have a separate playlist for practicals if you are not yet watch this just go and watch we'll meet in the next class thank you